I'm Mike Dimas, and this is Pinball Shenanigans. All right, so I talked to David Altec. He says that I need a capacitor upgrade in order to fix the glitchiness I've been having with this thing. You can see these capacitors not your typical looking capacitors. I asked him if I could maybe find one local, but he's going to send one out to me. Just means that I'm going to be waiting for two to three weeks, probably by the time I get it. So in order for me to keep on keeping on, back up all tech newer version. Look at that version nine. It is the latest. This serial number is K0072. And this serial number is L-O-A-U. I wonder what that means. That, I do not know what that means. But I've changed the dip switch settings. First one up means free play. And then the rest is for game selection, which is number four up. So let's see what this looks like. Yep, as suspected, one and four are up. So... I'm going to switch the CPUs until I get the capacitor and that way I can proceed and we can actually maybe play this game. All I got to do is fix that flipper and we can do our play testing. So let's figure out why the right flipper is not working after changing out this CPU and then go from there. Okay, so the new Alltech is in there. Hey, look at this. Mm, a little bit of hacky wiring going on here. What the? Uh, more hackage. Okay, so did I ever mention this? That I think I did. All these are replaced coils. They're quality coils, not original Bally coils. Someone changed all three coils, probably unnecessarily, because it's very, very rare that all three coils would be bad. Anyway, I got a little bit of unhacking on the wires to do. I can see this coil looks okay. So in terms of why this flipper is not working, I was expecting to see a wire off, which I do not. So I have taken my file and thoroughly cleaned the cabinet switch. And I did both sides. And that all tech will hang out for a few weeks until I get my part. All right, let's try and be steady so I don't get too motiony. I'm kind of zooming all over the place here. But look at this. Look at this. Do you see that? I think I see a lack of solder. Another just wrap job. Okay, a little more tidying up to do here than I initially noticed, but that's okay. But definitely some weirdness going on here that I will sort out. I think they're just extending wires, making them longer. Not uncommon. Um, so... We see anything else? How's this relay looking? For the gate, seems to be okay. Uh, well, let's turn the machine on first of all. See if my newer Alltech is behaving as it should. Let's zoom out here. Okay, that says what? Forty credits. Oh, and. Defaulted to 800,000 high score. Okay, that's probably all fine and dandy. Let's see what happens if I hit the start button. Hmm, says we have 39 credits. So, oh, maybe I have to burn off all those credits and then when it goes to zero, it'll stay at zero and still be on free play. Okay, so we're in game mode. There we go. Everything's fine. I expected this all tech to work. I've used it before. It's a good, good board to have for testing purposes. 
and keep it for that reason. Okay, so let's see if our flippers work. Those guys are good. Now, let's see if this guy works. Here we go. No, I can hear it buzzing. Uh, huh. I think there's not a wire on the other end of stroke switch tab. You see that? I think someone's got something wired up wrong here. There's only one wire going to the end of stroke switch, so that ain't right. I think we found our issue. So I'm gonna have to figure out what the correct wiring is. What a mess this is. I'm gonna have to uh, do some unhacking and I shall report back, but I think we're onto something. Okay, here's another problem I just found. This flipper controls this flipper. So when this flipper opens the end of stroke switch here, it should close this switch, which operates this flipper, I think. So that's why there's two switches there and only one there. End of stroke switch, end of stroke switch, and then this is, I believe, to activate this flipper. Because there's only one switch on the cabinet, not two. So there's the second switch. But take a look at it. It's closed permanently, so I don't think that's going to affect anything on the right side, obviously, but certainly the fact that there's no wire on the end of stroke switch is. So I'm going to open up this switch a bit. Then I'm going to figure out how this is actually supposed to be wired and probably redo the wiring on everything, all three flippers to make sure everything is much better. They're all screwed. Like, I mean, this one is just badly done, no solder. This is all hacked. And then this is incorrect. So I'm gonna redo all three flipper wiring next. Might take a minute or two. All right, so upon further examination and after doing a little bit of research, I have determined that there is supposed to be a wire going from this outside lug to the end of stroke switch. And if you look closer, closer, did it look like there was one there? Actually, I thought that little piece there was part of a wire, but anyway, I'll double check, but that's my conclusion. I'm missing a wire going from there to there. And I don't know how this ever worked without it, but I've got me some wire. I'm gonna cut all these wires and do them from scratch and make sure that they're good uh, because the way they are now, they ain't. Oh, those are not original screws and also I am missing a screw here. Okay, wait, I lied. Maybe those are original screws, but I'm definitely missing one over there. So I'll fix that too. All right, flipper wiring on coil number one has been unhacked. So I started fresh, I cut all the wires off, got rid of all the extra solder and wire frays, and I added a new wire from the outside lug to the end of stroke switch. And I also added a new wire on the other side of the end of stroke switch. So everything is now all tidied up. Question is, does it work? So let's uh, turn on the machine and see what happens here. Okay, well, zoom out here. Let's hit this start button.
start with the left flippers. Um, you can see there's actually a gap there now. So see if the left is still working. What is this switch for? So that doesn't activate the other flipper then? So what does that switch do then? Or does it? If I put a piece of cardboard in there, I could test that theory, but more importantly, let's see if the right flipper works now. I think we're good. All right, cool. Doesn't sound, didn't sound quite as beefy as the left side, but that's only because there's two going at the same time. But uh, if it's not as strong as it should be, then we'll address that too. But it actually works. We should, uh, no, I'll tidy up the other wiring here on the other two flippers and then, uh, then we'll try a test game. All right, flipper number two has been tidied up. New off-white wires for the end of stroke switch. They had the little short, fat green ones on there and the one was literally wrapped around the lug. Um, so I redid that lug and that lug and that one, someone actually did an okay job on that one wire. So I didn't touch that one. All right, so now onto this friggin' disaster okay so here's the diagram i found that i was using to uh, figure out the wiring here on the uh, right flipper trick now is to find the wiring diagram for the other flipper that has two switches on it so i'm gonna have to fight with that for a bit left flipper oh maybe that maybe that how to wire flippers for a three or four flipper game. Oh yeah, I think that's exactly what I need. Okay, but check this out. I just got a text from fellow shenanigander, Henry. Where is it? Right here, boom. Check this out. Oh yeah, he heard my call to action. And he looks like he's custom designing these cards from probably scratch-ish. These are awesome. I like the hardwood floor. And uh, he just texted back saying, true statement, I think, because I said you rock. Or no, I said you heard my call to action. <laughs> but it applies in both. True statement, you rock, and you heard my call to action. And those look awesome, brother. Thank you. Okay, so I made a post on Pinball Repair Help Group. I've done some research. And I could rewire this the way it is now but I just don't know for sure if it's correct. So I did ask for a little assistance, did a little research, I didn't really find my answers. So while I wait to see if I get a good link or a good diagram of the exact wiring that makes sense to me, uh, in the meanwhile, I'm going to uh, probably start a game. I'm gonna have to make sure that uh, None of these lugs are touching each other. I did kind of move them around a bit to take photos. Make sure I don't blow anything up. Looks pretty good. Okay. But I discovered something. It's going to start a game. Like, well, maybe I'll check into that drop target issue. Why it pops up so high. And... Can you see why? I'll give you a few more seconds. I'll drop it back down. No, wrong one. Uh, did you catch that? So, this bar slides out. Why does it slide out? Because the tab is broken off. See that tab there? Wee's missing a tab. So I think, pretty surely, that in storage somewhere, 
I have a parts belly drop target assembly, except would it it would have to be ooh an inline one. So I don't know if I have an inline drop target assembly. This is a different orientation crap. So that might be hard to find. Anyway, that's what I gotta that's what I gotta sort out. Let's see if I can find a new piece. Or weld. Oh, I don't have light. Or weld a little L on there. Or figure out some other strategy. But anyway, at least we know what that problem is and what the solution is. So I'd say let's uh see if we can play a test game now and see how that goes. All right, it's time to play our first test game with all flippers functional, in theory. Again, I have to still rewire this guy, but look, brand new, shiny ball, going in. I don't have the play field level, that's one thing. I do have my paper and my pen, in case we spot anything, but, uh, here goes the first game, officially. Mm, sounds still a little bit funky, but maybe my sustain uh, adjustment will fix that. Uh, should we write that down? Are we at that point yet? Sound? Question mark. All right. Ooh, my uh, shooter tip lines up nice to my ball, perfectly centered. Which reminds me, I mean, that kind of all goes without saying, but I guess I'll put it on the list. Rebuild. Shooter. That's simple enough. I could knock that one off in no time. All right, here we go. Let's see. Ooh, I feel pretty good. We're alive. Saucer's working. At least two pop bumpers are working okay. Well, that wasn't really much of a. Whoa. Definitely not level. I was gonna say, there wasn't really much of a ball hop here, which is nice. Because this rod was up a little bit and I had to bang it down into the play field. Yeah, that's actually a pretty nice uh, feed might change when it play fields at level, but flippers definitely have enough strength that I am smashing things around. I don't know how many balls this should be set for three, but I don't really know. Oh man. Okay, so the knocker works. I got a match. Alright. Don't worry, I'm not trying to put on a big uh I'm not trying to play like the Globetrotters. I'm just trying to analyze. I didn't really actually hit anything last game. I didn't hit a spinner. I didn't hit a drop target. I don't think I hit much of any target really. Slings seem to be happy. I'd like to see the top right pop bumper actually get hit. There we go. Now. Let's rip the spinner. Okay. Seems to be good. The reverse rippage. I always like the reverse rippage. Wow. That was a fast game. Okay, I'm going to do one more. Maybe I can hit a drop target or the left spinners this time. Not too concerned about leveling the machine. This is not going to be obviously where it's going to be hanging out too much. It's a good game to practice your uh, tap passes as well. Oh boy, that's what I get for making a drop target shot. Oh, a little insert diversion. 
I love how fast this game is, really. My friends may not love that. They like to play pinball, not get destroyed like I am right now. But it's definitely good training grounds. Hey, the gate worked. Oh, I completed all the left targets, I think. Oh, extra ball is lit. Let's try and get that extra ball. There's a left spinner rip. Whoa, valley brick, big time. Let's try our tap pass now. Uh, safe to say that did not work. Oh, another valley brick. Actually, it's not really a valley brick. It's a drop target. Assembly brick. Okay. Right now, I'm loving the way this game is playing. Um, so, what I want to do is get that flipper sorted out. In the meanwhile, I'm going to rebuild the shooter rod. And, uh, did I clean all the pop bumper switches? I typically do. I'm going to make sure they're clean and adjusted. Yeah, I think I did. Um, yeah, before I put it on legs. Okay. All right. So that was a su successful gameplay session there. I mean, it was quick, but I wasn't trying to play for length. I was trying to play for quality, not quantity. Does that make any sense? Probably not, but that is the shenanigander way. Okay. I just messed with the, uh, sustain volume pod on the soundboard and I got... Yeah, I adjusted it just a little bit, made it a little quicker. You can make that tone last a little longer. Here, shall we do that for fun? Let's see just how how crazy we can make this sound. Can you see? Right here is the sustain button. I can hardly get both fingers on it now. The way I've got things all jacked up. Oh crap, I'm pushing on capacitors. Okay, I'm turning sustain. Whoa. You can actually hear it. Let's see what happens when I hit this now. Very sustaining. But if I turn it all the way to the right, it's like it doesn't stop. Hmm. I'll turn it all the way to the left and let's see what it sounds like. <laughs> that is cute. All right. Sorry, I'm going to stop moving the camera around like crazy. Let's go back. Still a little too fast for my liking. Get over here. Oh, that's a change pitch, maybe because I'm at forty thousand or something. Okay, I think that'll work. Anyway. Oh yeah, so just to kind of confirm the wiring is correct. One thing I'm I've just did is that okay, I stuck a piece of paper in between this switch here because I was suspecting that the bottom switch was for the lower flipper. And to confirm that, I blocked that switch off and now I hit the flipper button. You can see only the one flipper is going now. I remove that. Now they both go. So I can confirm that that switch was for the other flipper, is, and um, appears to be wired correctly. So I might just rewire it the way it is, but make it a lot less fugly than that. All right, I got the shooter rod all situated and sorted out. New barrel spring here, nice and shiny. Cleaned everything up. The tip of the shooter rod was mushroomed so I had to um, file it down in order to get the little um, washer that was on there off and in order to get the shooter rod out of the machine I did have to file it down quite a bit so that means that once upon a time the shooter tip disappeared broke off and people were plunging the ball with no rubber in between and eventually Metal on metal caused the shooter rod to mushroom, thereby not being able to remove it without filing it off. But I did that successfully, and no kerplunk or thunk. It actually 
does what it needs to do now. All right, moving on. Oh yeah, I forgot to show you the old barrel spring. It's a little mushy. And I wonder if it was originally this color or it just, do you think it was chrome at one point and just this is a rust color or did it come in a brownie black type color and that's how it ends up because I'll show you. I, for some reason, I seem to have a collection of these old ones. But, like, look, all these old ones, they're like brown. So, what color did they start off at? As. I don't think chrome could turn to that color. So, maybe they just started off as a weird brown color and. Just stayed that way with a little bit of rust tinge to them. But yeah, so barrel spring mystery is currently unsolved. All right, kind of getting out of order a little bit here, but that's just how I rule sometimes. So I decided to like investigate the flipper and it was, you know, because it's a new coil, it was pretty clean overall, but I cleaned it up better. And yeah, so I just cleaned up all the parts and filed down the coil stop, any burrs, filed the coil plunger, make sure there was no burrs, get new coil sleeve. So, and I refiled the end of stroke switch to make sure that's good. So. Uh, yeah, everything is, is fine. I don't think I need to, to give it all new parts. Um, this machine, other than the hackage, is actually in good condition all in all. So, and part of the reason I can tell that one indicator is basically none of the lamp sockets are flaky. These old ballys are known to just have horrible lamp sockets and you have to replace a lot of them or do the little modifications to them but i don't think i have a single one yet i'm sure there will be that are flaking on me well maybe the one gi but that might have been the bulb anyway so just that alone is a bit of an indication of the overall survival state of the machine so um yeah anyway having said that doesn't necessarily mean that the flippers haven't been flipped 10 billion times, but uh, I'm just going to clean them up, file them up, change the sleeves, see how they feel, and go from there. But uh, that probably should be good. All right, so that is one flipper done. And I like the direction I'm headed. Maybe I'll do this one next, and then kind of procrastinating dealing with that mess but I'll do it and I'll make it nice but uh not on this episode thanks for watching we'll see you on the next one